Hello and welcome to the Red5 Developer Series. My name is Dominic Agatado and I'm the CTO and one of the founders of Infrared5. Okay, in part two of remote shared objects, we're going to talk about multi-slot um, shared objects. And with that in mind, you should take a look at the Adobe Flash Media Server documentation. And up at the top here, you can see that uh, there's a section called Designing Remote Shared Objects and a subsection called Data Design and Management. If you click on that, uh, you could learn a lot about um, how to design your shared objects. And you should keep in mind that shared objects do have slots, and you could either design it with a uh, object hierarchy inside of a slot, or you could use a flat structure where each slot represents one object. Um, and in, it, if you do it with a one-to-one uh, -one mapping, uh, what you're doing is you're saving bandwidth and you're allowing it to, um, to send less data each time you change an object. All right, so let's go over to the uh, application and uh, all right, let's uh, refresh uh, your memory on which on what we're building. All right, so we're building the uh, the fridge uh, magnets application, and you can see that if you take a letter out, you know it drags it around. Um, so, you know, just from looking at this application, you could already tell that. It's going to be similar to the single slot um, shared object uh, application, except we're now dealing with a, a matrix of, um, of data slots. Um, in other words, we have, uh, we have every letter of the alphabet going from left to right, and then we have you know, uh, a number of, uh, of, of rows of, of each of those alphabets. So we've got like a multi-dimensional array going on here. And, um, in terms of uh, the objects, obviously we have a letter. Let's say, for instance, the letter F. If you uh, select it and you drag, you know it, it moves around. So we're dealing with the mouse down event again, the mouse up event, and the mouse move event. And we set things to drag. So now let's go over to the code. And uh, okay, let's see here. so first you should notice on line ten that we've uh, got a a custom you know component called magnet group and it extends group so it's a container all right so if you go into uh, magnet group you'll notice that there's a, um, <coughs> a UI component called magnet group class and there's really nothing in here but you know uh, I wanted to uh, use a uh, class behind this because there was a lot of code and you know you never know if eventually we're gonna skin the uh, the component and at that point you don't want a lot of uh, Action script inside of your MXML class. So let's go back to um, the code behind it. All right, so we have a magnet group class here that extends group. And again, it's a container for remote, remote mag, uh, magnet objects. Uh, the first thing you should look at is um, uh, the constructor where we're adding an event listener for the creation complete event that's uh, dispatched by Flex. If you go into the uh, creation complete event handler, You'll notice that we're setting up uh, <clears throat> some uh, uh, what do you call it a uh, network code, and uh, actually before I even go into uh, the creation complete event, let's move over to uh, the create children method. Um, this method is an overridden uh, method from the uh, Flex uh, framework, and create children gets called before the creation complete event, and this allows us to actually add uh, UI components to our to our uh, you know top level component. So in this, we actually um, we're using a magnet skin util as a helper to grab the images associated with the letters. So if we want to go into that for a second, we'll notice that we have uh, a number of symbols. Let's just take a look at one. This is uh, class A, and uh, it's using the alpha A symbol from your uh, your flaw. And if I open up my flaw just to show you what it looks like. We have uh, every letter here, and each one of them is a symbol in the library. And we also have one more symbol, which I, you know, called the the fridge. And how you do it? Uh, how do you embed assets? Well, you actually just create a symbol, and then you go to properties and you give it a class of alpha a, and that's the name of your symbol that you're going to use um, when you're embedding it into Flex. So you just uh, export that. It creates a Swift file. And then from your embed tags, you could just you know point to that Swift file, give it the symbol, and then you could associate it with the class. 
And the way that I'm using this uh, utility is I've got a little method down here called get letter. We pass in a string of uh, the character, and I'm returning that class as a sprite instance that we could add to the stage. 